Once again, thank you and welcome to this event. Uh, on behalf of Webster University Geneva, we have Dr. Uh, Mariana Alba. She is a professor and researcher in marketing and communication for the BA and MBA programs. Welcome, doctor. Thank you. Thank you for being here with us tonight. And thank we you for also. Me. Thank you. And we also have on behalf of Webster, uh, Joanna Mitika. I hope I'm not pronouncing that uh, incorrectly. She's the Associate Director of Admissions. Joanna, thank you for being with us. Thank you very much and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight and for taking the time to, uh, to give us this presentation. So uh, while we are waiting for everyone to connect, once again, thank you for being here with us tonight. Uh, should you have any questions uh, about the academic offer, so the graduate business programs at Webster, please feel free to uh, type your, your questions in the Q&A box and uh, we will take them after the, the presentation. And also, of course, uh, we will get uh, in touch um, uh, after the, the first uh, part of, of the presentation about the certificate of, of attendance by Doxy, so stay tuned for that. Uh, now, without further ado, I would like to leave the floor to uh, Dr. Alba. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to me uh, be, to be here. I would like to thank uh, to the organizers of these events and uh, especially to Lavinia that managed to put us all together here. And I would like to thank as well to my colleagues, uh, Mr. Tim Young, who has oriented us within the designs and also how to um, present better in this uh, webinar. And my colleague, Joanna Vitvika, uh, our representative from the uh, admissions office. So I would like to start um, describing how was my experience the day I came to Switzerland. I wanted to say that I arrived in 2007 and uh, I came for three months. And here I am, 2022, a uh, long time ago, I came uh, to, to replace someone uh, on maternity leave. I basically felt in love with the city of Geneva and also with Switzerland. I heard a lot of things about Switzerland, but I was seriously impressed when I came here. And since the last three years, I'm working for uh, Webster University. I started with uh, one course and today I have also other functions. I'm leading the uh, Walker School of Business and Technology and it's uh, one of the main uh, departments uh, where, uh, in our university here in Geneva. So when I came to Switzerland I came because I was uh, working for an international organization, international association actually, and uh, I didn't expect to uh, jump from one career to another. I served 20 years for the aviation industry. And once I finished my PhD, I noticed that I had uh, strong skills to work within the education sector, especially because I had experience in the past working in training and development departments. Uh, the great opportunity I have here in this country is precisely because it's a country that provides opportunities. The opportunities are there, are served. We have to be very open and, de and develop the capacity to network. And this is what we encourage here at Webster to our students to network, to develop their own uh, network but also attend to the events that we organize here on campus and other events that are organized by other institutions in the city. Also in the country, we had a representation of students that attended to a conference in Zurich a month ago. And it was a tremendous success because they had the opportunity to ask questions to directors of mayor companies and also to be oriented in certain aspects of their careers. Uh, here in Switzerland, as you may see in the upcoming slides, uh, we have the basically the mentality, the, 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 the state of mind that it's absolutely important to uh, promote uh, 
innovation. As you may know, uh, in this, uh, this year, uh, previous years as well, but in 2022, the Global Innovation Index developed by uh, the World Intellectual Property Office uh, shows that Switzerland is the leading country in innovation. This was very well understood by the country uh, because innovation is a determinant, a determinant for uh, competitiveness and progress. And these are two aspects that we also uh, promote here at Webster University Geneva with our programs. We want students that are well equipped, that they arrive to the labor market with concepts that are uh, learned here in class, but they have a direct uh, connection to what are the demands from the labor market. So this country that is well known for the production of uh, chocolates, but also the elaboration of chocolates, but also watches, has developed different products that today are used internationally. And uh, there are many brands that are well recognized around the world. And this is one of the sectors that is developed in these countries. What is related to the design, what is related to uh, innovation, what is related with technology. And we cannot deny that on the other side, we have the international organizations, uh, international associations, um, also NGOs that are part of this ecosystem here in this country, but more particularly here in Geneva. While it's true that we have these two uh, main tracks, business and international relations, not far from Geneva, we have associations and representations from sport uh, organizations. And this gives to students a wide range of opportunities to uh, put in practice their knowledge, uh, also to connect with experts in the field, with professionals. And sometimes we invite them to come actually to uh, our campus. Uh, another important aspect, and here it's uh, with this uh, current slide, is how we promote with our programs that we can develop the programs and at the same time bring this experience from expert to our classrooms. This is important for our students because the practice that they get from here can immediately brought can immediately bring uh, be brought to the labor market, and we are permanently updating this. Switzerland is very well known for their designs. Switzerland is very well known for their tradition as well, and the companies that today have their head offices here in these countries are the ones that give the opportunities to our students to be part of their, um, uh, their organizations. Uh, as we said here also uh, in Switzerland, uh, we have opportunities in a very small country. We have a very good connection of ground transport. And our campus is not far at all from the cities, only eight minutes from downtown. And we have trains every 15 minutes. So that is not a problem for students that want to join us. And not because we have this distance from the city, is for us a handicap. On the contrary, we have a gorgeous campus here. We have a very modern infrastructures and the students have also the possibility to use the 
residency that we have here on campus. We have another one in downtown, where it is very well connected also with public transport. We tried also to keep our um, technical systems uh, to the most uh, developed uh, technology possible because it's important for us that they enjoy their journey. Means that we have these classrooms that are very well equipped with technology and this facilitates a lot the work and the contact between the professors and the students. That's why we don't want to run ahead uh, behind the, uh, the, 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 the innovation that is also part of our, our programs. And every single class the, that they have as this is a personalized uh, education uh, we try also to understand what are the needs of the students in order to guide them during their journey and see where are the aspects that they want to develop and where, how they are focusing to uh, work in the future. As I said, uh, there are two main branch, branches. One is uh, finance, and trading, and the other one is international relations. Here, this slide is very well represented how Switzerland became the unicorn nation. Uh, this or these uh, firms that have their head offices in Switzerland is a conglomeration of startups, also new developments and. The aim of these startups is precisely to cultivate, continue cultivating the, uh, this important aspect of uh, innovation. We have here this small country that uh, joined forces precisely to promote innovation is mainly because our institutions, federal and cantonal institutions, promote these activities and promote also programs that are supported financially, supported by the state, cantonal and federal state, to help this uh, project grow. So, we want to keep our traditions because uh, Switzerland is well known also to be a very conservative society, but at the same time, we don't want to lose the opportunity to be an innovative country and contribute to the economy of the country with these projects, projects that have been a reference for the national economy and today are competing with similar projects in the international arena. Here is a small description also in the areas where these projects based on innovation are basically, their, they have their main domain can be uh, health, robotics, artificial intelligence, blockchain. So we have many different projects that are focused on not only finance or not only um, fine tech. There are other projects related with neuroscience. There are other projects that are related with health, uh, well being as well. And this is uh, very well promoted. And not only here in Geneva, other parts of the country that also have their offices with these, these startups uh, these also these unicorns uh, have their um, their main head offices but we don't have to forget as i said before that switzerland is very well known for being a host state here particularly in geneva we are located in, in the, the, this part of the, the country 
where most of the representation of international organizations, international associations, NGOs have their headquarters or representations. So for us, it's important that our students also get in contact with these organizations because not only those students that study international relations can have access to this, also students that study finance, economics, uh, management, they can also be part of these organizations because this organization has departments that they have their activities related with the areas that I mentioned before. So to give an idea, uh, here in Geneva, we have uh, what is called the Cartier Diplomatique, the uh, diplomatic neighborhood, which is less than 10 minutes from our campus. And uh, we count with uh, some students, also alumni, that today are collaborating with international organizations, NGOs, also embassies, missions, and they have the possibility to alternate with the studies. Some, uh, they assign some hours to work within this organizations. We are very proud of that. We are very, we encourage permanently our students to find internship opportunities. Um, as I said, uh, we are in a very little corner of this country and we are not far from where all these organizations are located. Again, we want, I want to highlight that uh, we here in Switzerland, we have a very good uh, connection, ground uh, transport uh, that facilitate the, 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 the when people commute. And uh, here in Geneva, and also the, the federal authorities are very supportive with those that arrive to the country. We warmly welcome uh, foreigners and we do the necessary to help them uh, in, be part of the society. This organization, uh, for example, the International Geneva Welcome Center and as many other platforms have their websites uh, translated mostly in, into English other languages as well, but mainly in English. And this helped a lot because when I just arrived, I had some knowledge of French, but it's true that my dominant language is Spanish and I speak English, but French was not um, the, a language that I, can, I could at that time manage myself. I need always someone to help me. So it's important for foreigners that at least there are websites where they can find information in uh, English. Other languages as well, but mostly, as I said, English. This facilitates a lot, a lot our daily uh, life. Um, I would like to mention that also uh, both cantonal and federal uh, authorities um, encourage especially the interaction uh, with the local society for the sake of in uh, the sake of uh, integration in a peaceful and respectful manner we are a country with multiple nationalities one of my experiences is that once I take the train or I take the bus, actually, I can hear people speaking in more than 20 languages. And this is the beauty of the international Geneva. We are uh, in this moment a country, according to the national statistics in Geneva, there are more than 160 languages that are being spoken. So this is a country and particularly this canton because of the international community, because of trade and finance, trade and commerce are very uh, well populated by foreigners. So I encourage those that 
wanted to visit Geneva, wanted to visit our campus uh, to be prepared to have this warm welcome from our side, but also from the people that lives in the country. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Alba. Now, Joanna, I think the floor is yours. Yes, thank you very much. And thank you very much, uh, Professor uh, Alba, for your presentation. Um, in this part, um, I would like to focus on another aspect, which is how to actually achieve uh, your education in business. So in the first part, Dr. Alba, she presented to us all the advantage advantages of um, Switzerland as a location for uh, executing business and acquiring business skills. In this part, I would like to tell you more about our master and MBA programs that focus on um, business and management. I would like also to tell you more about the advantages of networking opportunities that also uh, Dr. Mariana Alba, she mentioned. So I would like to start with a um, few words about our campus, Webster University, Geneva. As you can see on this picture, we are in front of a beautiful, beautiful lake and in front of the Alps. Uh, you can see also in our backgrounds a different time uh, of the day whenever you can uh, benefit of this beautiful view. And um, our campus is a big campus. As you can see, uh, it's composed of a few buildings. So it also has a lot of facilities. I will tell you more about that in a second. However, right now I would like to highlight also a very important aspect which characterizes our institution, which is accreditation. So uh, it is a very important um, aspect of uh, educational institution. And also it um, describes the, the quality of education. Uh, basically, uh, Webster University is accredited by the Higher Learning Commission, HLC, which means that not only, again, it proves this, uh, it ensures this quality of education, the Swiss, uh, by, the, by, this go by uh, the USA, but also it uh, provides our students with possibilities of, a, um, of pursuing their further education, even at public universities and even in Switzerland. So in this next slide, uh, I would like to tell you more about our facilities. It is very important for students to have their students' life and to exchange between each other. Let's, uh, let's face it, and it's a great thing that many among you will be your future colleagues, you will work together. So it's very important to integrate and to do a lot of things together. So that's why, uh, first of all, we have residential life. We offer accommodation to our students on campus and off campus. We have also a cafeteria, we have fitness center, um, we have our IT rooms, uh, we have counseling chalet. Uh, about that, so uh, one of our values of Webster University is well-being. And we take it very seriously and want our students to feel happy and safe. So that's why uh, one of our buildings on campus is a counseling chalet and it's uh, free of charge for every student to go there and exchange with professionals if they have whatsoever any struggles. Um, so uh, on the top of that, we have also, as mentioned by Dr. Alva, we have great communi uh, um, communication with different cities. Um, uh, not to mention that we are well in Geneva with the airport that can take you uh, to a lot of capitals uh, around um, not only in Europe but around the world with a direct connections very often. Um, now I'd, I'd, I would like to also mention another important aspect is that when we um, think about Webster University, we are here in Geneva, Webster University is not only Geneva but it's a network of a lot of campuses around the world with the first one uh, that has been founded in St. Louis, in Missouri, in the USA, in 1915. After that, um, Webster University expanded, and the first campus um, founded outside of the USA was the one in Geneva in uh, 1978. Afterwards, we also opened other campuses, for instance, in Netherlands, in Austria, Greece, uh, we have also university in Uzbekistan or, or in Accra in, in Africa. 
It is um, interesting for, uh, well, obvious reasons of being able to, uh, to travel to, uh, to our campuses um, to, to network opportunities, but, but because of the also study abroad program exchange. We have this program that enables our students to rotate within, between campuses for a short period of time. Um, what you just need to, to check before uh, is to contact one of our staff members who is in charge of the study abroad program and check if one of these uh, campuses offers exactly the same program. And if it does, the curriculum will remain the same so you can freely rotate and then come back to your base campus in Geneva. Here are some of the pictures of our campuses. I can tell you like the one in Tashkent, Uzbekistan, for instance, it is a very big campus. We are talking here about more than 3000 students, the same very big one in, uh, in the USA. Um, the number of our students here in Geneva is around 400 students right now. And what are the benefits of global university campus network? So of course, uh, as mentioned, you will have this exchange opportunities with the identical curriculum. So you can freely continue and pursue education and, and come back. So it won't in any way harm your education or length of the program. Um, but also, well, you have the similar facilities. So for instance, you will have the career center uh, about uh, which I would like to mention a few words, uh, which is very, so very important when we speak about the business opportunities here in Geneva. So on our campus, you have the career service with professionals. So they will not only be there to advise you and to listen to you and tell you about the internships opportunities and job opportunities. They can also professionally assess you. We uh, have professional assessment uh, tools and tests uh, licensed. So even if you really don't know what you would like to do in the future, it's absolutely there's not a problem in this, like in which company, in which um, uh, sector. As you know, in business, you can do a lot of things and in management. Management, what is management? Management, it can be human resources. It can be marketing. It can be in finance. It can be in hospitality. Uh, it, it, it proposes a lot of uh, sectors management. So that's why even if you decide you want to work in business, you want to open your own company, but in which sector you would like to open it, in what um, specialization, what product you would like to sell. Is it luxurious product? Is it a leisure? Is it a travel agency? What is that? So this is when you can, um, even if you don't know it right now, you can come uh, to the career service and they will be there to advise you not only with uh, um, uh, the interview, but also with the, the scientific assessment tools. And uh, this is something that um, is very important for us, uh, the diversity. We celebrate it at Webster. So we have more than 90 nationalities um, um, on campus and we want to discover your culture. We want to hear about your, um, what food you eat, your, what music you listen to. We want to hear your language during our international days and not only well, I can tell you that um, recently when I was in, a, in our cafeteria at Webster University, I was speaking with our chef and uh, actually he proposed that I could bring him some Polish food. I'm from Poland and he proposed that, well, they could offer one day um, to serve to our students Polish food. So let's see if uh, we will have opportunity. Maybe Dr. Abba will be able to eat some Polish pierogi in some uh, several weeks to come. But this is just to tell you that we are very open-minded to, uh, to learn more and uh, about uh, cultures around the world. Now I would like to tell you more about our master programs. So, well, we offer in general here in Geneva five different master programs, but I would like to focus on two. I would like to focus on management and leadership and MBA Master of Business Administration program. First of all, I would like to draw you the, to the differences between them. So let's start with the MBA. The, the main objective of uh, MBA is, um, is to uh, prepare already the active professionals, so business people already working in the industry with experience uh, to perform even better and to learn more about um, Again, these different um, sectors of each business. So 
During MBA, you would have the classes that would focus on different areas. They would focus a bit on finance, on business analysis, on marketing, um, on human resources, tackling the main challenges of each of them. So you would acquire the general knowledge, but more on advanced and management managerial level, taking into account that you already have a, a experience in these areas. So now the question is, do you need MBA in order to be a successful businesswoman or businessman? And well, the answer will be no. Actually, you don't need MBA. So why to study MBA? So you study MBA in order to save a lot of, of your time, a lot of your money. Because by studying MBA, you have the classes with experts who will enable you to understand what are the mistakes to avoid in business and what are the best practices, what you should do to be successful in business. There are some people who can achieve this, they can uh, acquire this knowledge by make, basically learning on their, uh, well, ups, downs, you know, um, poor, better decisions, and they will get there. They can get there faster or slower, some in five years, 10, 15. But if you um, want to ensure um, that you, you open your business and you want to make sure that you don't need to suffer any bad investments um, or any po possible uh, dangers and inconveniences in your business, this is when you re register for MBA. Um, then there is a difference between MBA and management and leadership. Management and leadership is more designed for students who don't necessarily own or run any business yet. They might be uh, undergraduate students who just finished their bachelors and they would like, they consider, they would like to open their business. So in this case, um, they would like to acquire the general knowledge, but this is the first aspect. Our program focuses also on a different important aspect, which is, which is people, uh, as the leadership itself uh, speaks for itself. So if you are interested also how to manage people, how to understand them better, how to inspire them, motivate them, how you work with them, deal with conflicts, different situations, difficult situations. So then you focus more, more on management leadership. So, well, you can see that while MBA is um, more for already experienced professionals, management and leadership is uh, actually can be for both because you can also be experienced already uh, a professional wor working in, within the company. But if you identify that you would like to learn more about how to manage people, this is when you can also uh, take into consideration management and leadership program. Um, now there are a few information about um, our uh, master program benefits. So we offer small class sizes with up to 15 students per classroom. Um, we also offer a very flexible schedule, which uh, is, takes mainly place in the evenings. So mostly for the MBA, we expect uh, you future MBA candidates to be professionally actively working. So also we can share your knowledge and your challenges during other classes. This is why the classes will take place only in the evenings, usually around two days per week. Um, then the master students, they can of course benefit from plenty of events in international Geneva, conferences, uh, networking events as mentioned. Um, believe me, we have so many of them, and I will tell you more also about that in a second. Uh, and of course, uh, the study abroad options in within this global Webster network. Now, um, these are few of the main um, uh, prospects and advantages why uh, studying uh, business uh, is important and studying business in Switzerland. So while you study, you will develop, here are just some of the examples of these um, skills. Um, I would like to tell you um, first about growth mindset. Um, when you think about the growth mindset, what comes to your mind? What do you think is a growth mindset? So we say, uh, some experts in, in a business area, they say that 
in order to be successful in life, you don't necessarily need to be motivated. You need to be disciplined. And this is exactly what is growth mindset about. You need to know uh, that um, what is important is this discipline of you um, um, being consequent in your uh, in your journey towards your goals. You have your vision, you have your goals, and it doesn't matter if you really feel like that or not. Maybe you have a bad day, but you will be very. It's about perseverance, continuation. Um, so this is why with our project, with our schedules, with our readings, uh, and of course, uh, amazing teachers who, are, who make this program, we will implement and reinforce in you this growth mindset, um, which is also, which is basically a very fundamental aspect after for you, um, because this is something that you can learn. This is also very important. All of these things we can learn. Um, Developing 31st century skills. And thanks to um, our professors, they always keep in mind what are the necessary 21st century skills nowadays. What are the main skills that you need to be to, uh, have to have be successful? We need to have communication skills. We need to um, uh, know how to work in teams, uh, public speaking, analytical, critical thinking, and so on and so forth. So these are also the skills that we uh, try to develop uh, based on our alumni successfully during this program save the time by learning from the best so again mentioning about the professors growing your network um, this is something that probably you might already have um, um, noticed uh, and and uh, and you will you would even feel it more in, in the situation that you are in a in a place as geneva when you have so many important organizations and companies that um, growing your networking and knowing uh, professionals, it's not only enriching because you learn a lot from others. There's a lot of experts here who can really share their knowledge. That's why also it's very important, like, like by being here, to learn from the best and to, um, to try to meet as many colleagues and, and participate in as many events as possible. And of course, increase your qualifications because still having um, the degree and I will highlight here from uh, institutionally accredited institution is a very, very valuable document for your future. Now a few words about Webster events and campus activities. We not only uh, participate and invite our students to, um, to, to take part in some of the important events in Geneva, but also we organize many of them. So uh, just this week, uh, our Webster students are invited for uh, the Entrepreneurial Week here in Geneva. There's a lot of webinars with experts. Uh, we organize also the conferences in, within trash in organizations most of the times, and also here on our campus because we have these possibilities. We have auditorium um, where we also um, organize a lot of them. Um, Career services, as mentioned, will also help you with uh, preparing your documents, your CV, your motivation letters. Um, there is um, there is this Geneva Connect Interest Relations program that also can help you to understand better opportunities and help you to uh, connect with other uh, professionals, institutions, career planning. They can help you to map your future career, to think about the next steps. Um, and also to uh, for those who choose MBA to also uh, learn how to add value to the program. So here, there are some of the names of the companies that neighbor with us. Uh, but there are just a few. You can see some luxurious brands like Cartier, and you can also see, uh, well, Mont Blanc. You can also see um, uh, where Richmond is just our, literally our neighbor. You saw this uh, beautiful forest that is uh, next to our campus, just on the other side is uh, Richmond. Um, now, uh, approaching to the end, I would like to also show you more uh, about the internship providers and employers. So you can see here are some of the examples where our students, they did their internships. So you can see um, there are, of course, international organizations. There is IATA. There is, for example, Mission of the Maldives, which for sure would be a pleasant place as uh, for sure for you. If, um, maybe there will be a field trip. But in general, um, there are a lot of them, but um, of international organizations. There are just a few of them. Uh, 
as you know, in, the, in, in, in Geneva, we have, uh, we have more than 25 of international organizations. And then of the headquarters. And then we have also the private companies. We have luxurious companies, but also a lot of financial institutions. As, as you know, like this is a hub of the finance of, uh, of banking. So um, can be uh, as well very interesting for you. You can see here a sample of alumni employers in our region. So some examples where our uh, students, they work uh, right now after they graduated from our programs. Here you can see also some um, numbers or uh, statistics on our alumni uh, that already 20% of them are already being employed um, like with proposals uh, that come from Webster University. Uh, so we you might have various reasons why you would like to join uh, um, the program. Of course, it can be you would like to change your current employer, your job. You might want to be promoted, or you might want to develop better your own uh, your own company. Um, but anyway, you will have um, the opportunities for each of your needs, and uh, and you will provide with solutions. Then, uh, for students, 88 percent of alumni they were employed within one year after graduation. Uh, you might wonder where, uh, why not 100 percent. It is just simply because um, we take into consideration. Uh, where are our students uh, when we contact them and basically 12 percent of them they just decided to do different things in their lives not work and but maybe develop different projects but in general um just to sum up that um in the moment that you're looking for career opportunities we are there to support you and to advise you and we offer a lot of opportunities and master level admissions process so now uh well i will speak um from uh, admissions office to you uh, as ad admissions associate director, I can, uh, I'm happy to assist each of you in your application. Uh, and it is uh, the following process. So first of all, you choose um, the intake uh, start date. As you can see, we have uh, multiple start dates. We have uh, five intakes. So the next one still ongoing enrollment is in uh, January. So it starts exactly on the 16th of January, 2023. Um, then the next one is in March. We have also intake in May. Then there is optional, um, it is an optional intake because you can start there or uh, some of the students, they decide to take a break during this intake. And then we have another one in August and uh, the fifth uh, in October. Basically, what to complete your application, it's a very, um, uh, it, it's a straightforward process. You need to apply online. So on our website, there is a link apply, and then you just need to follow the instructions by uploading all the documents, uh, which are your CV, motivation letter, to reference letters, uh, transcript of records um, from your bachelor degree, uh, your bachelor diploma, and uh, well, passport copy and the English certificate. Uh, of your proficiency in English. Just here to uh, underline that in, in a situation, in a, if uh, you studied in English, for example, you've done your IB diploma, or you um, you had uh, you had your bachelor degree in English, you are exempted from English um, a requirement. Otherwise, we accept, uh, as you can see, following English uh, certificates. Already mentioned about alumni column, uh, community that we have a lot of students. How many exactly? So here in Geneva, already we have more than 4,500 students who successfully graduated from Webster University Geneva. In uh, at all the global network of Webster campuses, we have more than 200,000 alumni. So being part of our uh, network that you can connect with and, and exchange with them. Um, they uh, meet uh, during the alumni events. Uh, we organize also here in Geneva, but you can also um, meet with them in the different corners of the world uh, and just uh, catch up with them. I can tell you that sometimes actually there are some um, Webster students coming here and they're saying, ah, I graduated in, for example, 1995, 2000. It's just very nice to come here. And sometimes they even bring uh, their children with, with them because they would like them to come to study with us. So it's also very nice that um, Really, I mean, we really try to, uh, and, and we do uh, keep in touch with our alumni. Um, 
So in the end, I would like just to show you shortly uh, the program uh, piece if, uh, that you also can um, uh, dig more into on our website. Everything is available. But in general, here just to explain is that either the cost of um, both um, MBA and Master in Management are 38,880 Swiss francs. This is we don't require any financial commitment to be done from the beginning of the program. Uh, we have uh, these five uh, terms over the year, and we only um, um, the, the, the payment settlement is only requested per term and for the courses that are taken, and uh, there are uh, usually two courses taken per, per a term. So you can see also on the website, but definitely I invite you to also contact me for more information. Um, and also, uh, we can discuss. Uh, we can discuss as if you if you need any more assistance regarding that or regarding the scholarships we offer, uh, and so on. I would like to start uh, to uh, finish my presentation uh, with the um, with this slide. It shows the research done by Amy Somerville. Um, she made a survey uh, on more than twenty thousand American people. And she asked them uh, the following question. She asked them, so what, what do you regret the most in your life? As you can see, the biggest number of participants, they answered that education, uh, either that they haven't studied enough or they haven't chose to study something that they thought they would like, but they just didn't do it. Surprisingly, they regretted even more than uh, romance or finances. So this is just to leave you with this thought that if deep inside you feel like you want to study right now, you want to learn, you, you feel that this is something that you would need in your life, um, just, you know, don't... Um, hold yourself and uh, just and because, you know, there will be always some uh, challenges, but the most important is that, uh, uh, you know, you follow your follow your intuition and and so, so you don't need to ever regret anything basically in life. Right. Um, so thank you very much for your attention. And um, we look forward to uh, staying in touch with uh, all of you. And now uh, the floor is yours so we can answer your questions. Thank you, thank you. Joanna. Thank you so much uh, for the very interesting presentation. And of course, we do have some questions. I would like to start first and foremost by the ones that we have gotten via chat. So a participant asked if the uh, application uh, differs for students coming from South America. So if you have any different eligibility cr criteria and what languages besides English should they be able to uh, speak? Right. So maybe I will take these questions. It's admissions related. Um, we have exactly the same uh, criteria of admission to any student uh, from any country. Uh, regarding English qualifications as well, on our website, you can see there is a table with um, the scores that are required for each uh, exam. But of course, if you have any questions, you can also contact us. But in general, the admission process, as I described earlier, is the same for everyone. Only, just maybe one highlight, it the deadline will depend on um, whether the person will require a visa or not. If you require a visa, to enter Switzerland. This is when it's very important to um, plan it much way in advance. We advise minimum three months before the intake starts. For European Union, it's the deadline is it's much uh, closer to the starting date because they don't need visa application. Thank you so much, Joanna. So let's move to the next questions in the Q&A box. And for the participants that joined us later, uh, I do encourage you, if you have any questions about the master's programs, about the student life in Switzerland, uh, or in general, anything related to Webster uh, University and their academic standard, uh, feel free to type your questions into the Q&A box and we'll be happy to answer them. And to move forward with the questions, uh, a participant is asking uh, how long um, does the internship last if uh, they enroll in the management and leadership master? 
Right. Well, it will um, it will depend, first of all, on the activity rate during the internship. Um, we have flexibility. We can offer ex uh, internships that are even at 20 percent that you just need to be there one day per week. But we have also full time internships. So if you do the full time internship, if you can finish it within three months, but then you can also do it uh, in a uh, different rate at six months. This is really a um, question to, to see also what is the, um, the opportunity. Uh, because, of course, if there is interest organization that will ask for six months full time, the question to students, would you like to take it or not? <laughs> right? Sure thing. Joanna, thank you so much for the answers. So to move forward with the next question, a participant is actually asking, um, considering that they have a degree in English language education, uh, which program do you think would be more suitable? for him and uh, what work opportunities do you consider would be open after pursuing a master's at Webster? Right, could you just repeat the name of the course exactly? Again, that student is probably- Yes, they, um, they have a degree in English language education. I see, English and language education. Mm, well, it will really depend now. Uh, there, it depends on a lot of things of a working experience already of this student. Uh, this is too few information to advise on such important measure. So I think that the best would be to uh, contact us directly and uh, schedule the counseling session. So then we can advise per personally. Yeah. Absolutely. And on that note, I do want to remind the participants that they will receive an email with the recording of this event and with all the information to get in touch with Webster um, and to move uh, forward with the next question that we have gotten via chat. Uh, a participant is asking, should um, a uh, prospective applicant not have the necessary English level? Uh, do you offer any programs to improve the English level or? Yes, yes, we do, absolutely. Um, so uh, the, um, the level is C1, uh, depends on which criteria. Um, but in general, if you're missing a bit, if you're B2, uh, then uh, we can still admit the student. And then we offer this uh, English uh, um, preparation course, which is actually excellent uh, because I've met a lot of students who follow this course. So even if someone already has the certificate and, uh, and would like to improve the English, either the, I, I would propose it to the student if would like to do that. But yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Joanna. So I see a participant from Uganda, and thank you so much for, uh, for joining us tonight, um, is asking about the benefits of pursuing a master's at Webster as a law student. Joanna, would you feel comfortable taking this question or should we direct the participants to the admissions office for a more, um, for more insight perhaps on their situation? Um, well, it, if it's the, the general benefits of masters, maybe I think that maybe Dr. Uh, Alva could also mention about the, the benefits of masters because uh, she already, she had a, a bit um, already on that in her presentation, if you could. Thank you very much. Uh, the benefit of having a master, well, depends the area that you want to orient your career. But I would say that mainly because uh, today the, um, the workforce demands the more and more skills and also uh, students with a more um, practice-based academic programs, uh, we are complementing the previous studies that they brought from other schools uh, also providing a more international uh, scope of the program, because as we said, we are in a city that is so international, a country that is so international that our programs precisely help them uh, join the labor market with differential skills to compete with other candidates that probably don't have this international perspective. This is one of the main aspects that we cover here. At the same time, what we promote with our, we, we encourage our students with our master programs is to facilitate the access to information because these programs are 
uh, taught also by experts in the field. This gives a lot, a lot of background of what is going on today in both financial and in, in the business area and international organization. Uh, one of our strengths is that these Pro, this, these programs that are conducted by professors, of course, experts, uh, academicians, and also uh, professionals, give the students this particular background, this particular experience, this, uh, and they, they are equipped with the knowledge and the content because they bring to class real case studies. And from them, from these real case studies is how they develop their own uh, assignments and how they put in practice the knowledge that was acquired in the program and previous, uh, from previous studies. Thank you so much, Dr. Alba. Thank you for the uh, very uh, clear answer. And I hope we did help um, the participants make up their minds. So uh, to move forward with the remaining questions, uh, and I do think we mentioned this during the presentation, but Veronica is asking us if the Duolingo test is valid as an official English proficiency certificate. Can you repeat the question, please, if English is? If the Duolingo test uh, is valid as an official uh, certificate of English proficiency. I think Joanna can take this. Right, uh, very shortly, I can say yes, it is, and we require a minimum 110 points. That's nice. Thank you, Joanna. Uh, so, um, a participant is asking if, besides English, a higher level knowledge in French is requested as well for these two particular masters. Mm. Joanna, you may want to answer that. I have only one comment about it. Okay, so just very quickly to answer, no, it is not required, but it can be very helpful in Geneva. And you can maybe uh, add your thoughts then, Dr. Alba. Yes, the only thing I wanted to mention is that we have only one program that is being conducted uh, in French, fully, completely in uh, French, and this is the Health Management uh, Master Program. So that's the only exception we have. However, I think it's important to highlight that we have in every single program of this uh, university, uh, French classes and are mandatory. Are mandatory for non-French speakers. Thank you so much, Dr. Alba. Thank not you so much, the, yeah. the, the, the classes are not complex. They have the elemental, and knowledge, basically a uh, small conversation, uh, the most uh, common the typical uh, conversation that you may have with someone when you go to buy something in the supermarket or when you take the bus or you have to speak with the, uh, the administration for your permit, very, very simple uh, knowledge in uh, French. Thank you, Dr. Abba, for the uh, precise answer. And to move uh, forward to the last questions that we have, uh, a participant is asking if there's the possibility of working while studying. Mm, so, well, uh, it is uh, possible, but there are uh, certain uh, conditions. Um, while being a student, you have a student status, and in Switzerland, you're allowed to work up to uh, 15 hours per week as a student, but also then it will depend whether you're from European Union or not. If you are from European Union, you can immediately do that uh, from the beginning of your studies while you're not. Um, then only after six months but then there's also another situation well if you're ready here uh, practice with your visa and permission to be here in switzerland and you work of course obviously you can continue working uh, and study at the same time so it will be quite depend depending on uh, your uh, case it's a case by case uh, um, situation but um, uh, for sure you can also do the internships that's for sure full time yeah Thank you so much, Joanna. So uh, a participant is asking if you can perhaps give some examples of career uh, paths after graduating from Webster. 
I think that for that question, Tim, do you think you could answer that question? Because you did amazing research on that recently. Yes, so um, depending on which of the master's degrees you take in business, uh, there are a lot of different careers you can take. Um, management and leadership masters is particularly um, appropriate for people who want to work in human resources or as a project manager or somewhere in middle management uh, in large companies. Obviously, we have graduates who work um, in uh, a variety of very interesting places from uh, Bishmore next door. We, we have students who work there in, in luxury brands all the way through to uh, construction and um, and all sorts of different uh, different careers. The MBA is um, perhaps a little more suited to somebody who um, who wishes to to add extra education to their to their career um, once once they've already gone out into the workforce. So usually it would be there to reinforce the career that you've started already and to help you gain a promotion where you work. Thank you so much, Tim. So we do have one last question. A participant is asking if uh, you offer any scholarships or fee waivers for these two masters. Um, well, I can answer that question. So yes, we do offer scholarships. Um, this is the, um, um, there's, it's called financial aid um, application and it just needs to be communicated to us um, while the application process, we just open it, it's an additional application. It has a specific document that we require, and then we offer the scholarships between 10 to 40 percent of deduction based on the financial situation of the candidate. And, Thank you uh, so much. I, sh I should also, can I just add one more thing to that as well, that um, we have a, a special version of our MBA program at Webster which um, allows uh, anybody who has um, an undergraduate degree from a, in a business uh, qualification, which um, is accredited in a particular way. I mean, you can contact us if you want to know what it means, but essentially, if you have a business degree from a correctly accredited uh, university, your undergraduate degree, you can enter um, um, our MBA with uh, out of the 12 courses, two of those courses will already be covered. So you would be able to do a what would normally be a 12 course um, MBA for 10 courses. So obviously that's a reduction as well um, in the amount that you would have to pay. Right. Thank you so much, Tim. I think that's a great opportunity. Joanna, would you like to add anything else? From my side, um, uh, that. Uh, that would be it, but I would like just to thank uh, again all the participants for, for joining us and also to my colleagues uh, uh, for being with uh, us tonight. Thank you all so much. I was wondering if uh, perhaps as a final note we could um, take note of any imminent deadlines for the application process. So uh, if participants should be aware of any uh, applications closing anytime soon. Right, um, uh, of course. So I can tell that uh, all the students uh, who are interested in applying for still January intake, but again, I will repeat that starts on the 16th of January, 2023, uh, they have the last moment right now to still apply. Uh, we are closing um, the, um, the enrollment uh, by the end of November. Uh, so if you're interested in applying for January, this is still, uh, you have still uh, roughly two weeks to apply, so we encourage you to do so. And even if you um, are unsure of intake, whether you want to try January, you can still apply and already know if you're accepted, but we can possibly defer for March if for some reasons, uh, right? But this is just to tell you that definitely uh, it's now time to make them mind and then apply here. Thank you so much, Joanna. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Professor Alba, for being here with us tonight and for taking the time uh, to give us this presentation and to answer all the questions that came through.
Once again, I would like to thank our participants who stuck with us until the end uh, for their presence here tonight. And of course, you will get an email with the recording of this event, as well as all the information to get in touch with Webster. Uh, once again, thank you so much. I wish everyone a nice day or evening, according to where you are connecting from. And I hope to see you again, hopefully for the next events with Webster University Geneva. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Until thank you. next time. Thank you bye so bye. much. Bye.